Hello, everybody. Welcome to After Hours. This is a this is not a, a new show. Uh, this is merely just an extension of the podcast, as you can tell by the setup. It's close to the same, but just a little bit different. Uh, nice, a darker blue tone, which I think is yeah. Is we nice. uh, probably won't be as long. No, these are these shouldn't be as long. I mean, it depends on the subject. So After Hours is more kind of it's not really going to focus on like movies or games like our regular podcast is this is more kind of for you know personal experiences like going to like conventions or maybe behind which the scenes did, on projects which is, that's, yeah, which yeah is, that's exactly which is, what we did yeah which is the title of, the, of this um but you know going to going to places or um just talking about behind the scenes of projects we're working on or have worked on um uh, so this is a little more of a uh, personal thing for us to just kind of you know just trying to chat about things and uh, not so much be about you know whatever we're talking about yep and of course as you guys saw by the title we over the weekend we went to uh indiana comic-con yes uh, we that did was um my first con i went to i think this was like your fourth one landon um yeah, so I have been, I went to, I went to, God, I can't remember. I went to some con up in Indianapolis, but it, at the time it was at some sort of, it was at like a different convention center at the time. I went the first time I went, um, and I think they changed the convention center. Um, I'm not 100% sure. It might have been a completely different convention. Um but, what but I went to one. Seller? It, it was still, yeah, it was still a uh, Comic Con. And okay. when I had gone, I had seen Ernie Hudson and a couple of other actors. That was my first time going, and I didn't really, you know, dress up. Um, and then the second time I went was um, up in Indianapolis. Uh, and um, that one, I, I did dress up. I went as Newt Scamander. I don't know if I have a photo of that at all, <laughs> still. But the, um, yeah, the yeah, third didn't and your, fourth didn't third one the, go. Didn't you go the, as uh, yeah, Rorschach, yeah, the third Rorschach. and fourth. Well, the third and fourth time. Um, so this is my fifth. This is oh, my your fifth. fifth one. Okay. Yeah. So the third and fourth time was back when Louisville had their Comic Con, uh, the city of Louisville. And that was in downtown Louisville. The first time I went as Director Krennic from Rogue One. Um, and then the second time I went as Rorschach from The Watchmen, um, which I, I, I don't know if I still have it. I found a link to an interview I did uh, at that convention. I had a. I had a reporter come up to me and actually send it and I'll pull it up later. Yeah. Um, (laughs) I don't know. I I'll let me look because I did have an interview with um, someone at that convention who um, talked with me. Uh, But yeah, that was, that was the fourth time I went. Um, And unfortunately, uh, you know the unspecified Louis- virus of unknown origin. Well, I was gonna say Louisville. Um, Louisville really doesn't do conventions anymore. Um, yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's a whole um different story. I'm sorry if I. My talking gets a little weird. Yeah, I'm trying nice. to look you're getting, for. You're getting really spaced out here. I'll I'll, I'll take over. Well, I'm I'm, I'm looking for the <laughs> I know. link. Um, and... but yeah. So, like I said, this was my first convention. Um, I've always kind of wanted to go to cons before, but like I just never, I guess, had an interest, or you know, didn't really care to do so. Um, so, and I wasn't even planning to go to this one. You know, my plan was to go home for the weekend. Um grab my Lego game, go see Elton John in concert, and then peace out and head back up to my dorm, right? Um, and then, like, last minute, my dad texted me. He was like, hey, how about we just go to Comic-Con for Easter? I was like, I'm down. 
Um, I thought he was joking at first, and and he wasn't, and he got the tickets, and we went. And uh, no, it was well because I had I had brought it up to you a couple yeah, couple weeks before, and um, I think I found it. Oh, nice. I think I found me. it. Send me the link so I can pull it up. Let, let me make sure because this is the guy who interviewed me. I'm just gonna make sure. Okay. But yeah, because you had you reached out to me, and honestly, you made it. Sound I found like, it. I found it. Okay, yeah. Send me the link. All right. It's, but you had made it sound like it was. Thing, and I. This is my own fault for not doing my research. But you made it sound like it was more expensive than it actually was. Okay, so this video starts at like six minutes and ten seconds. For you? Uh, that's yeah. For me, I'm the last interview in this video. Okay. Um. No, but oh. uh. No, yeah, tickets um, for Indianapolis or Indiana Comic Con usually ran about, um, you know, th- those ran about uh, thirty to forty dollars. Um, yeah, and like that, at least to me, that's not expensive. But yeah, you made it. I didn't again. I never asked you what the pricings were, and I didn't do my own research. But I, I, I thought that like it was more expensive than you made it sound. Yeah, and. Uh, well, because I hit, yeah, so I had brought it up a few weeks beforehand. I was like, hey, do you want to go ahead and plan this in advance? We could go up to Indianapolis um, for two days. I, I, because at the time I was saying, hey, we could go to the convention for multiple days. Um, right, because you wanted to do Friday and then Sunday. Yeah. Because my, our plan was like, I would leave. But I'm glad we didn't do Friday because did it, did it, End at five every day, or was it just Sunday end at five? Um, I'm not sure. The, the schedule was different for every day. Um, okay, because like, um, if, um, yeah, because if it had, if it had cl- ended on Friday at like five, they wouldn't have been doable. Because again, I had a class to like one fifty. Yeah, that that was the thing with you. And is, then it'd be like an hour no, drive, I was so I wouldn't to... get there until like three. Yeah, and then it only give us a couple hours to walk around, so that would be. And time. yeah, I was trying to plan this weeks in advance, so we didn't really know what our schedules looked like, and no. that's that's the one thing I don't. <laughs> I've done that with every con. I've always been. I've always planned last minute, and at some point, I'd like to plan for a con a couple weeks in advance. Um. But no, this yeah, this was my fifth con. Um, Louisville, the city of Louisville, stopped doing conventions because, um, well, the city wants more money, um, and unfortunately, it just realistically can't pay for it. Um, which you know, which results in us having to drive up to Indianapolis for like That's an hour a and a half. Drive. That's not a bad it, drive. It's it's not a horrible drive, but it then killed again, my car. Then again, <laughs> well, then again, I'm my used car to, is I, broken. <laughs> yeah, well, that I that, I mean, that, my that could be the trip, or that could just be your car. I mean, it, it maybe could be I. It yeah, could be my car. Then again, like I, I lived. I have in to get Idaho my car repaired years. now. I lived in Idaho for eight years, and um. Specifically, Twin Falls, Idaho, and that's like Southern Indiana. Sorry, Southern Southern Idaho. Well, you're um, used to those long drives. Yeah, and we and would I... always go to. We, at least my family would go to Boise, like like once a month, and that's like a two two hour drive from our house. So, and when you do yeah. it like almost once a month for eight years, you know, two hour car rides just really become nothing. So yeah. that's why, I like driving to Indianapolis, I'm like, oh, that's really short. Because <laughs> I'm just like, oh, an hour drive, that's nothing. <laughs> that's like half the time it takes me to get from my dorm back home so it's about two and a half hours from muncie yeah um so it so yeah um not a bad drive at least for me um for me on the other hand um it's rough with my job because <laughs> uh, it was always a matter of um convenience for me going to a con and that also affects the costume i wear so um like when I went to Louisville, when Louisville had their con, I wore um, two very uncomfortable costumes, um, and that was because I was I lived closer, you right. know, so I was able to you know I don't have to deal with that drive. So like, um, well, when you I was director wear Krennic, your stuff while like driving. Well, I know, yes. but like, there's a uh, the matter of okay, I got to account for how long I'm going to be in the car, how long am I gonna you know what 
costumes am I going to wear? Um, and what do I need to transport? So the first con I went to, um, well, in Louisville, in, uh, I went to Louisville Comic Con, which is maybe 20, 30 minutes away from me. Um, and I went as Director Krennic, and that uniform, you know, is, um, I don't even know if it fits me. I don't, it's, it's a very tight fitting uniform, uh, and I don't know if it even fits me anymore. Um, cause it, it had a very tight, um, upper body. I have a very broad shoulders. Um, so the waist fits me fine. Easy it's shoulders. just, yeah, it's my shoulders. And it has shoulder pads on the uniform. I suffer the same issue, don't worry. Yeah, and my shoulders, because of it, the top buttons where my shoulders are, because that thing goes all the way up to my, you know, the um, cape shoulder pad thing, it, like, I'd constantly have to keep pressing down on it. Um, Right. But, yeah, that, you know, I went to that convention, um, and, you know... I felt like I could wear that because I um, I lived closer. And same with Rorschach. Rorschach was a costume I put together the night before. It was a very hot one. You know, you're talking about a huge overcoat. I don't know if you're playing the footage from the interview or anything. Yeah, it's. A, um, I just haven't. I'm not yeah. showing it right now. I, I'll uh, I'll pull it up here. Yeah, don't. Um, you don't have to have the sound um, going, but I, I, mean, I sound it's... horrible. <laughs> Uh, I, mean, I sound awful, um, but yeah, the I would like a convention to be closer. Um, it, no, but I love Indianapolis Comic Con. You know, I yeah, it was, uh, it was. We saw a lot of good stuff. Uh, we did. Um, I I know you're going to be showing photos. Yeah, of so cosplayers just, we ran into. And, yeah, uh, I'll I'll get into that right now. Um, so yeah, so. Yes, so of course. To let's preface what we want. You went as Michael Myers. Yes, uh, I went as the Halloween, Halloween Kills. Kills Myers. So on here, you're you're the one standing here on the left. Um, and since we went on Easter, there was a Michael Myers right here who had bunny ears and holding an Easter basket. Um, oh, it was great. Was there, he was. That was fun. We saw him around a few times, and yeah, yeah that was just that was that was a that's, lot of fun. That's what's so nice about um, cons, um, everyone is just so everyone's so open yeah um, and, and we, we, um, yeah, it's just it's so nice there are a lot of cosplayers and and a lot of them are really oh, nice tons. you know there's yeah. just there's 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 they're great people to talk to um because you know they they express they share the same interests you know yeah um this one this was a really cool one he went as the michael keaton um batman yeah let's talk about that wings, guy that guy his wings like this this is amazing like he I mean, it just looked really good. Like he had it so he could like lift the wings up. Um, oh, it was like they ejected out. Like yeah, um, well, Christian they're... Bale's. Yeah, I mean, like, I it reminded me. Christ... I think he's even wearing the Christian Bale uh, belt. I think he might be the. I mean, he was awesome. Yeah, he his there was also another guy there who was um he was dressed up as Pattinson's Batman. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, I didn't get a picture with him, but his outfit was the, was really good. Um, you said there was a story. You didn't tell yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 So I was talking with him because this was I was in a group. I'll, I'll pull up the picture here. Um, uh, I'm just going here. So there's a picture I don't want to share just yet. Um, oh. We'll get nothing. Yeah. We'll get to that in a second. Um, but if you follow me on Instagram or follow the trio pictures, you'd probably have seen it. But anyway, so it was with this group here. Um, you know, some people went as Ahsoka and Anakin from the Clone Wars, and they again they were really chill. Um, yeah, and I saw them before. A times. Before this photo was taken, because you had the guy in the Mando right there, he was also like really his his Mando armor is really good. Um, but uh, the guy in the Batman costume, I was talking with him. Uh, he the day prior he went as um, Spider Mandalorian. What? And like it, it was just a Mandalorian, but it was like red and blue, you know. Uh-huh. And on, on the on the back plate had Andrew Garfield's Spider Man logo on the back. Yeah. Oh, it was really cool. No, it was just really cool. Like it, it was just it was just a color scheme, but he went as that. Oh. And it, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 he called it Spider Mandalorian, even though it's like just red and blue. Like I think like um, 
I've never heard of that. That's um... it was just it was just really cool. Like he just had the color schemes of his Mando armor, red and blue. I think his like helmet. I want to say his his helmet and his chest plate were red, and then like the knee pads and the arms were blue, like the classic you know Spider Man. That's suit. really and, like, clever. I yeah, and then of course on the on the back of his Mando armor, um, he had the spider logo on the back plate. Um, I didn't see if he had it on the front plate either. I didn't remember much from his picture he showed me. Um, and apparently, so the 501st was there the, on that Saturday. And mm-hmm. apparently they just gave him the death stare. And what? Like, they just disapproved of his, like, of his cosplay, apparently. Are you serious? Yeah, that's what he told me, man. And I'm like, oh, so the 501st, that just makes him sound like a bunch of pretentious jackasses. Well, okay, let's... But I, uh, I don't think I don't think they are. But like hearing that, it's like, oh, okay, that doesn't well, sound very okay. reassuring. I, I'm gonna go ahead and say this. I have heard, I've met a couple 501st members, and I'll say this: the the ones I've met have been really kind to me. Uh, I know. Now I know the 501st suffers from a, a couple um, bad. There, there's some bad stories out there of the 501st and, and stuff like that. And the Mandalorian mercs. I, we won't get into that today. <laughs> there's plenty <laughs> of other creators who have talked about them. Or, or, um, like uh, the, what, the Rex and Around show? Have you heard of them? Um, I have not. Those guys used to be 501st members. They went as clone troopers. And um, I know they were talking about how they decided to leave um because the, it, the it's just um i think their their issue was that it wasn't very open to creativity uh yeah, in terms what, of costumes from, from what you what from what you've um from what you've shared with me before is that like they have such a, a, a like set oh my god like guideline yeah. like it's so specific down to the type of material you have to use like it's not even options like you have to use this material well there's or you're there's like, certain options in terms of like armor like if you have it but it's like very or limited resin in terms of like fabrics i know sometimes and that's because um you know when you get into uniforms um and and I think when they get into that is because um, the Five O First have been in Star Wars things before. You know, they've been in um, uh, famously the season one of Mandalorian. Um, that whole, you know, Moff Gideon lands in uh, spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> Moff Gideon lands in front of the cantina. And most of those stormtroopers that run out are five hundred first members. Um, yeah, so that that to me is like that's really cool, you know. That's that's that, cool, but like when you, you you get into you get invited to be like on set of, but you get into the details of. Um, uh, there was I I heard there's a lot of um, now what what I'm saying is just this rumors. Now I'm not saying every five hundred first member is like this. Okay, like. But if you're five oh first and you're listening to this, please do not think I'm talking about you. But like, I do know that there's um, rumors of racism. Uh, there was a rumor of uh, just uh, a t- toxic environment. Um, and you know, I feel bad for the people in the five oh first who are really supportive, um, because you know I've met a ton of really supportive Mandalorian mercs and 501st members. You know, when I went as Director Krennic um, and I talked to them, they were super open to me. They were like, hey, you know, you've got a great Krennic cosplay. Um, of course, mine wasn't entirely accurate. My, my, um, uh, you know, yeah, I had the wrong boots. Like, yeah, and then you said, wasn't the, or was it, am I wrong on this? Like the, ranking badge wrong or is that right yeah my ranking badge was wrong uh, okay. it was made out of a weird material it was it came with the cosplay it was like a rubber and velcro it wasn't like metal and magnets like it should be but l- that was wrong and my boots were wrong um and the 
pants were wrong, but you know, they were really open to me. They were like, you know, you can put some work into it and it could re- look really good. Yeah, I'm not and I'm not saying that and, all 501st members are No, you know, and I'm not saying that either, but I'm, but I'm like, just saying I, mean, it's I know not that out of the realm of possi- issue. Yeah, it's not out of the realm of possibility that there are some who are, you know, yeah. so I guess stuck up. That's about- that's the difference between um let's say the Ghostbusters cosplay community and the 501st. Um the Ghostbusters community is very lenient. Um in terms of now they do have some requirements but it's um a lot more lenient to creativity like they won't judge you in terms of like you know you've seen so many ghostbusters cosplayers with uh pink hello kitty proton packs yeah (laughs) or you know something like along those lines where they're like um you know they're not you know they have re- like gear requirements. You have to have the flight suit. You have to have certain name badges. Like, e- like a lot of the time, um, I was reading a requirement for Ghostbusters cosplayers, and um, there was a thing where it said you couldn't have a name tag from one of the characters from the movies unless you had unless you looked like them. <laughs> unless yeah, um, unless you. Like you had features that looked like some of the actors, or so you know you resembled. Is, like yeah, I've so seen Egon related, related cosplayers to the... that look like Harold Ramis. You know. Okay. Uh, just real quick, one thing, kind of unrelated, but not. But like, uh, matching people who look like actors. Uh, during the convention, there was a guy. Oh, yeah. Th- yeah, there was a guy. I I don't know the character's name, right? But because I, I don't watch the show, I don't but like it was Peter Dinklage's character from Game of Thrones. He and the looked guy like a taller looked, version of just Peter was a taller Dinklage. Peter Dinklage, and I it was, was like, scary. "It was." I'm like, "This guy just looks straight up like Peter Dinklage, just tall." It was uncanny. It was uncanny. It was. I know. Oh my gosh! It was just like down to the hair and the beard and everything. And I guess I'm, it wasn't intentional because I was talking to the guy as well, and he was just like, "I was like, I've heard that before." I'm like, "So I'm probably <laughs> like, was it intentional?" You talked to him. I did. Yeah. I didn't even know you talked to him. I just saw this is, this him is, at this one is, point. This is when you like went wandering. Yeah. You went, you wandered off, and okay. I was just kind of looking, walking around. Um, did you talk to him? And you were like, "You look like Peter Dinklage." I did. Like, I, I told. I just. I like, hey man. I was like, hey man, you look great. You look, you look like Peter Dinklage, and he's like, yeah. <laughs> so, so it was pretty. It was pretty fun. Um, but no. So we'll keep going through more of the. Oh yeah, and there were a few guys who were like Death Trooper and a Snow Trooper. Hey, those guys were cool. Those yeah, those guys were yeah, right here. Chill. Yeah, these guys like holy crap, man! Like their stuff looked so good. Yeah, I ran up to him and I was like, "Dude, I gotta get your photo." I don't yeah. know if you have the one where I have. I'm trying right now. Yeah, that one. I was I was like partly out of yeah, cosplay. This was, and I was yeah, like, this is, this is the one before we left. This was kind of. Uh, we so have I have just, a Sub Zero mask so, on. You're wearing I, a Sub Zero <laughs> mask, wearing your Michael I, Myers. Um, I had purchased jumpsuit and yeah. I'm holding my blaster, which um, we'll get into. We'll get, we'll get into. Yeah, I I had bought a Sub Zero mask, which um, I'm glad I did because I can't. I really didn't want to have to buy it online. Is it I had been more looking online? Well, no. It's it was a little bit more expensive at the con, um, but the the costume store I shop at. Um, they haven't oh, had cool. one. Yeah, they haven't had one in stock since like October, and I I had been wanting one. Um, so uh, you know, maybe this October I'll buy the scorpion. Well, yeah, because you're yeah, because we'll between this one and the scorpion one. Honestly, this one looks really good. Um, I got to wear it as well, and that that gave me the idea of maybe putting together a a winter soldier. Yeah, at some yeah. point. But I just um, I just, I just need into a three D blaster. Pizza. Okay, let's yeah. So the... so um. Yeah, so uh, I just passed it, but yeah, I got I bought a blaster, and uh, at this convention, uh, you know, uh, Giancarlo Esposito there's, yeah, was there. There's, there's um, actors. There's, there were quite a few you know. of them. Uh, my my dad got a picture with uh, Carrie Elways. Um, oh really? Yeah, he has a pic. I didn't. I should have asked him. For I didn't a know he was there when we. Yeah, went. Carrie Elways was there. I told you that. I we thought he was there. No, I thought he was there the day before. I didn't know. No, he, he was, was there. there. He was there when we were there. Because uh, my dad got a picture of, I can't remember what the movie that he got the picture from, 
but he got a quote from Twister. Um, oh, I see. It was like, um, I think it was like a. Oh, by the way, I, I really like your weather reports. Um, it was something I like that. He, was like, uh, wait, that was from Carrie. So, Carrie Elliot. Well, yeah, it was right. like um. I thought so, I thought he would have gotten like the Princess Bride because that's my no, favorite. So, well, because my dad's a weatherman, so the movie where you know Twister <laughs> was about a weatherman. Well, so yeah, got, his the picture of Carrie Elway's was from Days of Thunder. Um, uh-huh. You know the uh, the ra- the racing movie, but it kind of yeah. adds a little more to my with my dad because um for a long time I think he still kind of does this, but I don't think he does as much as anymore. I don't really know. Um, he just would volu- voluntarily do weather for NASCAR. And yeah. he became very well known in the NASCAR community. Um, he even had some of the drivers follow him. Um, he went as like the, you know, his, his handle was like the NASCAR weatherman. Um, mm-hmm. So it was, he, he was, he was really into that. And so of course having the, the picture of Kerry Elway's, you know, for, with, you know, days of thunder, the racing, and then a weather quote kind of, that mix was it was it's a nice it's a touching story with with my dad um and then i had no intention of getting anything signed by anybody um, yeah my brother my parents had offered my brother to get like a signed thing from charles martinet who was also there and i thought it was really cool i almost did yeah. that but i was like if i have the option to go see somebody i'm gonna go see giancarlo esposito um mm-hmm. and i went and bought a, a blaster which is actually is a really nice rubber blaster. I'm a, a somewhat a little tiny bit sad that I got it signed because it's actually just a really nice blaster in general. But I um I got to meet uh Giancarlo. Uh such a really cool dude. Like he is like I Yeah uh, when I was in line, he was talking to people about some of his like acting experiences and like, you know, on set and stuff. And he's just like, man, he is just he is just the best. Because he was telling, yeah. I can't. I don't know if he was talking about like Breaking Bad or something else, but he was talking about how like you know they're shooting the scene, and the director wanted this one way, you know, and he like brought this suggestion of maybe like doing it some other way, um, you know, and then also being like you know maybe having an idea, but the director's like, nah, we're doing it this way, and then he sees it and he's like, oh, that's that's amazing. And he thought about like you know like setting aside his ego, you know, <laughs> um, yeah, and but yeah, and so I got the blaster signed, um. So the quote I got was, you know, from the the, the famous um, Far Cry Six meme. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That I I just thought was, I was like, what do I want him to sign it? Because I don't want to be like, dear Alex, blah blah blah, whatever, you know. Like, I, uh, that's, fine. That's but what like, happened to me with um, I had gotten uh, William Shatner's autograph, and he was like, what What's your name? He was um, no offense to William Shatner, he was very un- un- unenthusiastic, but I could tell, you know, he's probably tired. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um. So what I had in the blaster is you know the the <laughs> I was acting, right? I yeah. had him write that, and then of course by, right above the trigger, I got his actual signature right there, which is really nice. Um. And so when I got to his manager handle or whatever, um, you know, I had to go, I had to pay him, you know, uh, tell the guy what I wanted to have on the blaster and where I wanted it signed, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I told him what I, I wanted to write down, the, you know, the haha was acting stuff. And so he puts the sticking out on the blaster and slides it to, to Giancarlo. And he looks at the blaster and what I wanted written. And he just starts laughing. Yeah. <laughs> and because he knew exactly what I was wanting. Yeah. Um, and it was so funny. Um, yeah, he was, was a really just, nice guy. He's just a really he was just a really great dude. So I'm I'm really happy. Uh, I got to meet him, and I said it because my friend and I, my friend here up here, Nick, um, because he had mentioned because he was going to be at Comic Con. That's how I knew uh, Giancarlo was going to be there. Um, and of course, I sent that picture to my friend because me and my friend both we really like Giancarlo. Now, was was he there when we went? Who? He said Nick. Oh no 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 no. No, he he didn't plan on going. He just told me that Giancarlo was going to be there. Oh, okay. You you had made it sound like he was going there at some point, and I no, he was told me he was gonna be there, and that's how I knew that Giancarlo was gonna be there. I see. That makes sense now. Yeah. So I have the blaster. I'm gonna 3D print a stand for it because that's like yeah. you know, the best the best thing that I have now <laughs> in my yeah. collection is, and I I'm just I'm really happy. Uh, and I, asked, I was asked him if he could point the gun at me. 
for the photo. Yeah, that photo's uh, great. Um, it's, I, it's I showed just that just to a, great a couple photo. friends of mine at work, and they were like, dude, there's that's awesome. I know. Um, um, next one, I think this is probably the best cosplay we saw at the entire event. Uh, of course, this guy went as Doc Ock from No Way Home. Oh my god, and he's so good cool. Good lord, this was just absolutely amazing. Like, the... The that guy, crazy. that guy had like lines to take photos with him. Oh, like, you know, they were like groups huddled around him to get photos with him because of just how great his cosplay was. Yeah. And I wonder if he just chilled out in the venue in the lobby the entire time because like, I, I, I don't know. I, Some people I do because I don't recall ever seeing him walking around in the convention because you had told me you had saw him when you were out in the lobby and that was the only time I knew about it. So I wonder if it's because that he knew he'd get see more people that way, or because he just didn't want to like bring the tentacles inside because well, it'd be a hassle to. It walk was a with. it was a very large costume. Um, it's very wide. <laughs> so I, also, I'd imagine what a legend for him wearing Crocs. Like that, just, I feel like that just. <laughs> I didn't just even weird. notice that when no. I yeah. The, the costume I got my really photo good. With the green jacket, you know, and then the the belt around it. But yeah, I mean. I, Cause I asked him, I was like, "How he made the tentacles?" And I mean, surprisingly enough, it's literally just PVC piping and EVA foam. Yeah, man, people like that are so um, creative. I've only, um, I, I've only like done paintings. I've never really built anything um, for I wish cosplay. I could. Like, I really wish I, I could. I, I mean, the last, stuff that I, it's, it's just the fact that I can't. It's just, I just, I just don't because I don't have the the budget. On the expense or the space. Yeah, so, I, the last time I did something like that was maybe my Mandalorian helmet, which I repainted, and that was right. um, that was that took a couple days. I mean, I have a bunch of just other props lying around, but nowhere like near the extent. Hi, folks. We're here at Galveston Con in Louisville, Kentucky. And who am I here with? Russia. How long did it take you to make this outfit? Um, this was actually very thrown together, okay. uh, very last minute. So yeah, this has been like a progress over time, really. So it's just kind of a bunch of other cosplays put together into one, really. That's great. So, yeah. Are you hot? Uh, very, very <laughs> hot, yeah. I can imagine. So is this your first GalaxyCon or no? Uh, no, this is my second, uh, second one. And uh, so far it's been really fun. Okay. I really had fun. What, what were you last year? Uh, last year I was Director Krennic from Star Wars uh, Rogue One. That's great. So what do you like about GalaxyCon? What makes you come back each year? Um, honestly, just uh, it's very enjoyable. I find it, you know, uh, every year I come with my friends, um, and so far it's been fun every time. Uh, just getting to see uh, vendors or uh, sure. the other actors. Um, you know, it's just... It has a great environment to it, and so that's what keeps me coming back. That's great. What advice would you offer someone who's never done cosplay or worn a costume to GalaxyCon or Comic-Con? Um, I would probably say, uh, you know, obviously look into it and see, you know, how you feel about, you know, enjoying yourself, being relaxed. Uh, it's all about the relaxing environment, and I feel like this place really gives it off good. That's great. So. Well, I appreciate you being on yeah, well, here at GalaxyCon. One thing for me that was a good experience when I was there was that there was like a, a couple 3D printing people there. Yeah, um, yeah, you had and, some and that was that was yeah, because like you know I I I'm I'm been to those of you who who don't know and don't follow me on Instagram or anything. Um, I mean I think I don't even talk about on Instagram all that much either. I, um, I don't think you do. I, I I posted like a few things like my battering and stuff, but I never mentioned they were 3D printed. I just showed them off. Um, yeah. But I've been slowly getting to the hobby of 3D printing. Um, I bought a 3D printer. I think it's the, it's the Ender 3 Pro about almost two years ago. Oh, the time flies. I don't remember. Um, You've had was, that it, for it, a while. It, it was in the summer. I know. I think it was in the summer for my senior or for our senior year of high school. Um, and I used it a bit at the start, and then during the middle, I kind of just didn't use it at all. Yeah. And then, uh, about come spring break of this year, I was like, you know, I kind of want to go back into 3D printing. And so when I went home for, uh, for spring break, sorry, my fucking voice. 
sorry, I think I drink my, my water real fast. Um, no, but um, I, I brought my printer back up with me to my dorm, and I've just mm-hmm. been just overhauling that thing. Um, really getting its uses out of actually I had to just repair it today. I got my parts in today to repair it because the the Bowden tube uh blew out, it melted. So I had to replace it. Um I haven't had a chance to test it out yet because I had like new spread bed springs for it. They're really good in terms of like tension wise, but they're too long. I have to try to get wire cutters to trim them down a bit. Yeah, like for me, I'd um I love like a judge dread cosplay yeah, or robocop and so i the 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 sad part of my printer is that it's it's small so trying to make helmets is rough because of how small the bed of the printer is um so i haven't really experimented that much with helmets i've kind of been doing more um small stuff i mean the only really big helmet that i have is my um cyberman helmet but yeah. I can't wear that because the the neck is too. Um, yeah, you made it too small. It's, it's too the neck is too small. So I have I have an idea to use like magnets to attach it, but that's something. I need well, to even finish. even with magnets, I'm I always thought that maybe it might even still be a little difficult to get on or fit. Well, I mean, even if with I the use, neck if, so if I use magnets as like a two piece kind of thing, like I can slide the back part onto my head. And the front part could be attached with magnets, and you can find well, some really strong saying magnets is... to. Well, you can find some strong ones. You'd be surprised. Some small, some small. What I'm strong saying ones. is, it's a very tight neck, and even it if is. So I can't, put magnets, but I can't so... slip it on. But I mean, it's a tight neck, but I can always get it. I can always wear. It. Or I, or if need be, I could use a heat gun to heat it up and um, push the sides a bit more. But yeah, I don't, you'd I don't have own to. A heat gun. I don't want a heat gun, so I can't do it. Um, so uh, there are it's workarounds. A yeah, there are workarounds, but you know, it's 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 worth it in the end. But um, I've been wanting to do a lot more, so I had you know, because what was beneficial is you know, sorry, I can watch all of these YouTube videos on like people's recommendations and how to do and what like what things to do and everything, but. The problem well, is you had a video. conversation with uh um, well yeah with both the people it was there like, was, i think cause 3d there was, was one of them yeah there was um, a and there was another guy Wars. yeah there was another guy i talked to i didn't i don't know if he was i think he was just a 3d printer just a hobby i don't think he was like a company or anything but like what, what's beneficial for that is because like you know like i said watching a video you're just you're watching so if you have a specific question it's not gonna get answered right or yeah. you have to skim through an entire video to to find said answer and sometimes you won't even find it you're watching a 20 minute video and then the question you have isn't even addressed and then there's you type it into the search bar and there's like so many other options you have no idea so yeah having a one-on-one with people who are much more experienced in in that area it was, was really nice for me um to get you know tidbits and and recommendations and everything from those guys so ultimately it was just really really good and i it was it was good for me i'm you know, I've been on the search of wanting to keep 3D printing stuff, and I mean the the goal one day is to build a Mandalorian armor. Yeah, that's that something is, for both of us. We've wanted to do for a while, and it's just been really difficult. It really has been, just because, like you know, with my printer being how it is, it's like trying to print those big pieces is like really, really, you know. It's it's a lot to try to do all of that. So part of me, it's like um, I've been tempted to make you know, um, like some of the small stuff out of three D printing, but some of the bigger stuff out of foam. Just because uh, you know, I've what? always had a, I've always had a love hate relationship with foam, um, especially in cosplay. I there was one thing. Well, two things I built out of foam. The first one was I had built Ash's chainsaw from Evil Dead. Um, for those of you don't, who don't know about Evil Dead, Ash has a chainsaw hand. He his hand gets possessed in the second movie, and he has to cut it off. And he, in order to replace it to fight back the demons, he straps the chainsaw onto the stump of his arm. Um, but I had built uh, the chainsaw out of foam 
and it looked like crap. Uh, maybe this is my skill. I've seen some people. I think it's just do... your skill, my dude. <laughs> maybe I've seen some people build some amazing things out of foam, but it's it's difficult. I it's think very it's just difficult, your skill, my guy. I think you're just garbage. I mean, if you um, had someone who's been working be... with foam for a long time, then it's probably like nothing to them. It's probably like right. a... and so and and that's just kind of just the thing. It's like you know, it's it's a it's all about experience. <laughs> You know, it's well, that's that's what I'm saying is if you, if you build, it. well, that's what I'm saying. You're, I'm, I'm saying, you're coming at this as, oh, I could build Mandalorian armor and it's gonna look great. Um, well, I never know if I don't try. That's the thing. I mean, I well, again, I just, say that, but testing. like, it's 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 a lot of testing and it's a lot yeah. of. I mean, building anything for that matter, you know, whether it be you know, armor or, or just some accessory, uh, with foam, it, it really, what it comes down to is it's always going to be trial and error. You know, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, unless you're doing the craft for like the, for like ages, you know, then yeah, you'll have it down to a science, but I mean, I'm not afraid of failure. Like if I mess, <laughs> if, if I mess up, oh, well, I've messed up. I have now learned from my mistake and I'm going to not do it again. Yeah, I so, I need to good find some curve. way to get Mandalorian armor. So but just, I, okay, this is like this is the um the concept of my Mandalorian armor that I want to make. Um, that this was used from like an action figure that happened to be the same armor that I have that I just recolored it, added a few bits to it. I think it looks really good because like, I have a plan for it to be, you know, like a more like a like a Jedi Mandalorian. And this was like a concept you and I had. About a year yeah, ago. we we had, we had like discussed it like because that. we had been wanting to work on Mandalorian cosplays together as well as Ghostbuster ones. Um, yeah, but that that stuff's all become a little muddled. I don't know what my next cosplay is going to be. Um, Neither do I. I guess I'm I'm thinking about maybe I want to do soldier, something, but yeah, it's like. For me, it's gonna be a bit because, like, I mean, I can three D print the mask and goggles. Um, well, and then for me, make I've the been arm out of foam or something like that. But that that's just like you know the easy stuff, I guess, because I still need to get like the costume, you know, and then. Um... Well, for me, it's been okay. Where do I go from here? Because I'd like to do something simple, but a little bit more challenging. So the one. The two I've been considering the most is um, possibly Sub Zero from Mortal Kombat or Judge Dredd, because um, those be two, cool. Dredd would be cool. Sub Zero, I already have the mask. I'd have to look into like some sort of three D printed gauntlets, maybe, or so some armor pieces. Uh, you know, Sub Zero from Mortal Kombat. I'm not really sure. I haven't really taken a look yet at. Like, because you know, for Mortal Kombat, I it doesn't really have to look exactly the same. Because honestly, you know, um, in like for instance, in Mortal Kombat 11, their armor is interchangeable throughout the entire game, so it doesn't have to look like a specific one. You know, so if I did that, then I could kind of make it my own Sub Zero, um, right? Um, but Judge Dredd, on the other hand, if I do that, I could go as, like, my own judge, you know, um, which would yeah. be cool. Like, I don't have There's to be Dredd. I could... Room. Yeah, well, because for the Dreads, um, or the judges, because they're judges, you know, there's... It's not just Judge Dredd. Right, I, it's not I, just I've Dredd. seen... I've seen cosplayers who go as judges, and they have their own patches with their own names, which is really cool. Um, so, you know, if I do that, I could be my own judge. Um, I could, you know, have the helmet. I don't know where, <laughs> I don't know where people get the jacket though. That jacket is, um, cause of course if I go as a judge, I don't know. If I go as a judge, I'm going as the one from Carl Urban's, uh, Judge Dredd movie. Not the, um, not the Sylvester Stallone one. Um. <laughs> That one, that one's okay, but it's it's not my favorite. It's it's a little cheesier. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, this being going to this con has made me kind of want to do more 
cosplaying and is really yeah it and opens I to, it opens I, I up want to, to do more whole... it's it sparked something that i i want to keep going <laughs> like i want to get into this you know and well it's it's a whole community of just people who just love what they do yeah and it also helps with like if you're trying to make like you know short films in our case you know getting into this helps with, like making videos because then the costumes are already there and everything so yeah no o- overall this experience was was a lot of fun and i definitely see myself going back to the con soon i just gotta yeah i <sighs> go with I think the next one um, in Indianapolis is going to be in May of next year. Um, you know, they're already yeah, they're already plan- planning for next year. Other well, than that, I, I don't. If I can get I myself really into know. a pretty decent sized shape and not be the unhealthy fat bastard who lives and dies by pastries, uh, <laughs> that I am. <laughs> I thought you were talking about Austin Powers' fat bastard for a second. No, but... no. Quoting the great Joe Gano. Wanted, I thought you wanted to go as him for a second. No, I was like, no, what? No, 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 no. I, I was making the Joe Gatto reference. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no, just, um, just real Murr quick. Was real, there. Yeah, Murr was the there. Day he was the, he, yeah. And jo- Joey Fratone was there as well. Yeah, he was. So, but um, anyway, but if I get, if I give myself the shape, which I'm going to try to do, uh, I know something we have talked about is going as um, Batman and Riddler. <laughs> Yeah, uh-huh. because um, I designed. I mean, it's a rough Photoshop. I don't have it on on hand right now to show. But um, after watching the Batman, I was like, man, I really want to have a Batman cosplay. So um, I think it'd be really cool for us to to do that. So I've been looking into possibly making our own with like you know, three D printing, buying stuff on Amazon, and like trying to just build our own stuff that'd be really cool um yeah batman and riddler and <laughs> if we could get michael to go we could get him as like joker there was a um there was a horror convention in um early march i had wanted to go to that with you and michael but that was like you were out of town michael was busy and if I had went, I would have just gone by myself. It was like somewhere down in Kentucky, a little past when, Louisville. When was this? March. Yeah, it was like oh, early yeah. March. Oh yeah, I, I would have been up here. There was um, there was the woman who plays Sydney Prescott from Scream. Like a bunch of Scream actors were there, like Matthew Lillard and um, some uh, Skeet and some other really great actors from horror films and i i had wanted to go to that um but honestly i yeah i have no clue when the next big con will be i'm I'm gonna keep an eye out yeah i don't i don't really know if i i I can afford it right now (laughs) my car is a mess we Um, got time we got plenty of time like another year or so yeah. Um, so yeah. Because if we, we if I don't do another one this year, I think I'll be fine with that. Yeah, um, I don't plan on doing another one this year at all. Um, because I, I want to get more. So it's like I want to get some like stuff made, and not just like throw something. Yeah. Like I might if I find another smaller one, I might go to one. Um, but I, I probably won't do another big one like Indianapolis because I can't afford a trip like that again. <laughs> um, because my car is just like yep. it, it's broken. There's no way. Yeah, that's unfortunate for you. <laughs> I mean, it's not much I can really <laughs> say about it. You know, it's just like it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, anyway, you know, no, I, was, I, uh... like I'm so glad that my car broke down before. Or, I mean, after. Um. You know, yeah, the, that would that would have sucked. <laughs> oh my god, I can't imagine being stuck <laughs> like that. Yeah, that would have been dreadful for you. Well, yeah, I mean, oh, honestly, yeah. like this experience was just super fun. Yeah, and I'm glad you, know? you enjoyed it. I'm glad we could both I did. go. It was it was um, a great it was a great time. Uh, I had a I, sc- I scared plenty of people. There there was yeah, one you, kid you who was. <laughs> this one kid who was afraid to get next to me, uh, which was hilarious. Yeah, it was just uh, 
you know, it was certainly a lot of fun yeah, here, just at the oh, convention that's... center. Just, and there you are, up on the balcony. Are <laughs> you playing that video? Down. Yep, I am. Yeah, I. No, it was I, certainly a lot there's of fun. Some... I will definitely be doing this again um, sometime. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, great experience. Overall, it was a good weekend for me, so I did it. <laughs> yeah. That being said, have a great night, everyone.